All right, well, Robertson, of course, acting up and acting up radio, which is kind of weird nowadays to say radio because I'm not sure anybody really listens to radio, I mean, within a five-mile radius, and then you lose it, and you got to get something else. But uh, welcome to Acting Up Radio. You can go to the website at actingupradio.com. And, of course, on Instagram, it's me, uh, at uh, Will Roberts Actor, and uh, all that other fun stuff. On uh, Twitter, it is Will Roberts Acts. That's A-C-T-S, not like Axe Murderer. Um, so check that out. Uh, today, we have a really great show. I'm very excited, kind of ramping things back up again and getting interviews with a lot of great people in the industry. Not only, because I'm going to start calling it the new Acting Up Radio, but not only in regards to if you're an actor or someone in the industry, but also in regards to uh, just regular people wanting to know about the industry or what films are out or what was behind the scenes and all that fun stuff. So with that being said, uh, you know, it came to my mind that I wanted to have a uh, some directors that I had seen, known of, heard of, or seen their projects lately. And lo and behold, I was at a Starbucks and I was with a fellow actor. She's an actress, but we call it actor. It's generic. And I had the chance to meet a gentleman by the name of Eric Bross. And uh, that's B-R-O-S-S. I hope you're Googling right now. Um, you'll check them out. Got a lot of stuff going on. I'm going to put my glasses on. I don't usually do the big bio thing because, um, fortunately, I believe people speak for themselves better than anybody can speak to them. So without further ado, I don't have a wing. And you'll notice on my left or my right side, you'll see Eric. He's there with some of his posters he's done in the background. Eric, welcome to the show, brother. Hey, thanks for having me on. Man. Yeah, Appreciate I'm, it. I'm very excited to have you on. Uh, you've got some great stuff that you have done. I got to tell you, I actually saw the werewolf one. I love that. I lo- <laughs> I, did you really? I, Why I were really you? did. I really did. Back, what is that, like uh, a few years ago, I'll say. I think it was 2007. Uh, no, 2000. Let me think. 2010. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Are you watching that movie? Um, well, the fact of the matter is, is I spent about seven to ten years a- at Fox Kids, and oh. so um, you know I was on air host and did all my wacky fun stuff, and so you know, tr- and then I taught musical theater education when I was younger, and blah blah blah. I'm also a professional clown magician, blah blah blah. blah. But the point uh-huh. is, is that I'm always been involved with family programming. Oh, and- pardon. Yeah. So if family programming is something that is very difficult, especially nowadays, because I remember back when I was doing Fox Kids, they wouldn't let me hold up a product or they wouldn't let me say anything in particular because they knew that we had influence to kids. Now, I think uh, all bets off and you can do whatever you want on TV. <laughs> And on the internet. And on the internet, unfortunately. I have a, a six year old son, and I, I, sometimes he's watching stuff, and I, he just. It's just, it's just wacky. Yeah. It's just, I, they're, they're just, people are demonstrating. Yeah. I have a five and an eight year old. I have a five and an eight year old. So, you know, yeah, I do know. And my boy is like locked and socked into what I call hooked on iPhonics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately uh, you're right. So uh, I, first of all, I commend you because I know that you've spent a lot of time in uh, family programming and it's it's not, not, not. I mean, not that much. I've only done two two movies in the family programming genre. I, one for Disney, one for for Nickelodeon. Well, let's see, two of the top. So, <laughs> I mean, it's not a lot of time. It's like two two you know two movies that were yeah that were different. But you know, I, actually, the the Boy Who Cried Werewolf, I won a DGA award for. I know. I yeah, know. so it's kind of crazy that that the movie this movie I was doing for here actually ended up getting me some, um, you know, getting me <laughs> yeah. DJ. Well, I mean, come on. I mean, the thing is, is that like, like I was saying, uh, when you have two major networks like that, do you even call them networks anymore? Yeah. And, uh, and then you get a DGA. Um, I'm sorry. You're officially a good uh, family provider. <laughs> I guess I get these charged. There it is. So uh, fast forward to right now, uh, you have a film that's coming out. I want to talk to you a little bit about your directing and your style and what you do, but uh, Affair of State, if you're looking at this video right now, if you're not, 
yeah, affairs of state. If you're not looking at this from a visual standpoint, because this, by the way, is split screened on Skype and you can see Eric and myself. Um, you are listening to it on a podcast or a radio station that we're on. And if you aren't, I recommend you try to see the visual because you can see us live in a person. Uh, but Affairs of State uh, 2018, you've got a pretty darn good list of actors in that thing. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Pretty nice cast, really great cast, actually. Um, it's uh, Adrian Grenier, mm -hmm. uh, Thora Birch, Mimi Rogers, Mimi Rogers. Uh, David... Uh, David um, David Elliott, yes. who is uh, who was also David James Elliott, I should say. David was on the on the was on a big TV show for a while. He's a oh, big yeah. star. You, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. I don't know the name of it, but I remember him and I saw him. I'm like, whoa, you know, uh, wow, this is a, a large right. film. Show Lionsgate, Jag. Lionsgate. Yeah, right? yeah, but he was on a show called Jag. That was that's show. right, Jag. Right, but this is a Lionsgate. It was a Lionsgate. It's a Lionsgate movie. It came out. Uh, it. it it came out in theaters in June of last year, June nineteenth, I think, or something like that. And it's been doing really well. And it's it's now on on uh, you can you can catch it on Hulu uh, or Epix, I think, and probably on Apple iTunes. You can probably uh, rent it there as well. And uh, yeah, it's a great and great cast. We have Thora Birch. If you guys remember her from American Beauty, she played uh, the daughter, true. Kevin Spacey's daughter, and also she was in a movie called Ghost World. Adrian Grenier, obviously everyone knows him from Entourage and uh, um, The Devil Wears Prada. Um, these are the two most famous things. Sure. Um, and then there's a young actor that we introduced, uh, uh, David Cornsweat, who plays the lead actor. He was just a couple days, he was, I think, about three days from graduating from Juilliard wow. as an actor, and we cast him. It was his first lead role, his first really role in any movie. He'd never done a movie before. Interesting. And he knocked it out of the park, and now he's doing a show called The Politician. Oh, I wow. think. Uh, you know, I'm gonna have to do a quick. Um, yeah, I don't know that one, but TV um, search on him. But he's got a big show coming out. Um, and he's a super talented guy. And he's a huge star. You can see he's a pretty handsome guy. Yeah, a pretty good looking and, guy. Uh, so, and then Mimi Rogers, of course, everyone knows who Mimi, Mimi Rogers. Rogers. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we just got really lucky with this cast and uh, and especially finding David. It was very tough because trying to find an actor uh, to play a role when you have a, such a specific vision in, in mind um, makes it makes it tough, makes it really. Oh, yeah, it's called The Politician. That's the name of the show. It's going to air on. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Let me see. Yeah, it's it's coming out soon. I know that the theater near you soon or your home yeah. theater. Yeah, it's probably Helen, just in time Helen. for the elections. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, right, exactly. That's so exactly. anyway, uh, so so yeah, we were very lucky with the whole cast. David is, a, is an amazing young actor. He just knocked it out of the park, and he really has to carry the film. And then that combined with I think um, with the with the Thora Birch, who plays his roommate, right. she's just amazing. And 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 you'll see Mimi Rogers doing. She's just terrific. She's yeah, like she's his she's wife. And um, and uh, it's you know it's just great. You know, it really 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 works. And Adrian Grenier actually is very unlike anything you've ever seen him in before. Oh, that's great. It's so, quite a cool. So let, let's it's sex. You know. All the all the good scandals, all the good stuff, yeah. Uh, I.e. politics. Um, let Let's talk a little bit about um, uh, the past, uh, meaning that you've been doing this for a while. And if I remember correctly, seeing something about a high eight film camera and uh, something in your bio, uh, it definitely le leads itself to believe that you're one of us that started off with whatever we could find and moved to probably an XL1, and then moved to a, a, maybe an iPhone, and then moved to whatever you may have done, but uh, basically watching technology move along. And I mean that in a technological standpoint from our phones uh, and our technology to being able to do what we do in a, right. you know, with less money uh, into uh, even the, uh, the work ethic that is involved with the modern day actor, 
um, production. Uh, so I want to ask you, how it, how has it really changed since you kind of started that really sticks out in your mind, if you don't mind me asking? I mean, the biggest change would be just the technology, as you're saying, you know, the, the uh, digital technology is revolutionized. I think digital technology has done, and then even more so, what the 16 millimeter camera did for uh, independent filmmaking, because 16 millimeter camera was around forever. You know, I mean, I think, I think you know, I mean, they were, they were shooting 16 back probably, I think they shot 16 during World War II, yes. particularly they went on, on D-Day, and you had George, uh, um, uh, the director, yeah, George Stevens. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. See that, you know, uh, he was there. He was at D-Day, and they were, they were rolling, I think, uh, uh, um, Bell and Howell cameras. These yep. very sturdy. You could build a house with these things. They were like freaking – and that's what they were shooting. So anyway um, – you know, that made it possible because, you know, filmmaking was 35 moments, very expensive, light, you need a lot of light. Mm -hmm. And they were coming up with faster speed film so that you could shoot in lower light, you needed less light. Mm -hmm. 16 millimeter film, it was cheaper, easier to, to, to shoot. Super 8 was more, you know, just consumer kind of product. Uh, it was actually 8 millimeter and Super 8 came out in the 60s or early 70s, I think. And all it means that you had more screen because there, was, there were only holes on one side and the other side was just a, a right. You know. uh, and 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 so you know what what sixteen and Super Eight did for kids, Super Eight became a way for kids to be able to shoot movies because you know other than being at home with your parents <laughs> shooting that little you know that shaky footage on the beach in eight millimeter, Super Eight really started to step up. And then for kids like me, when I was growing up. Super 8 was it. I was shooting Super 8 film with a, with a sound stripe on it, so I would record sound. And yep. I, I created a, a, you know, I did a, a 45 minute Super 8 version of a Christmas Carol when I was wow. 16, 15, 16. Yeah. So, anyway, so the technology from that, that made it possible for me to make movies. Um, and uh, it was not cheap, but but relatively cheap, I guess. I think it cost me $20 a roll of film to both shoot and process it. That's a lot of money when I was Yeah, a kid. absolutely. And I, I was working as a, as a, I think I was working as a caddy, making money over wow. the summer you know, to, to, to so pay for my... So you're a golfer? I am not a golfer, actually. I mean, I do, <laughs> I, I try to be a golfer. I'm a terrible golfer. <laughs> okay. But I was a good caddy, though. Okay. And I could read it, I could read it fairway. Okay, anyway, um, so I, I think the thing is that um, then, then when I got into, into film school, then it was uh, once again, super eight and 16 millimeter. And we shot all that and we shot it and it was relatively expensive. But now the difference is, is that the digital technology and, and even my first film, I shot on, on something called, uh, super 16, oh, sure. which had a bigger format because once again, the perforations were only on one side as opposed to both. So you had more screen format. So then you would, then you would shoot that and then you, the negative would be turned into an internegative, inter, uh, interpositive. And then you, from that, anyway, you do a 35 millimeter blow up. Sure. And that's what I shot 10 Benny on. Uh, uh, and it made it probably cut our costs in half. But in the end, we ended up paying more because you have to do the blow up. Yeah. But that being said, we were able to make a movie, but it's still more expensive. Now, today, you could make that movie. You could make my movie for probably a lot less. Yeah. The production was big. Um, you can't take away the number of people, cast, you know, extras, all those things you have to come up with production to create production value. Those things do not change. Right. But the technology to be able to shoot a movie now is right here now. Right. This is this is it. Or a good consumer prosumer camera. Mm -hmm. Um you know, that can shoot uh, 5D, a 5D, right. 5D camera can shoot 4K, you know, sure. my God, you can, you, that's broadcast value, right, Absolutely. and you can broadcast that kind of thing. So I, t I teach a class over at the New York Film Academy, and, um, and I tell the kids, you know, you're very lucky, you don't understand how lucky you are. Yeah. No excuse to, to not go out and make a movie now. Really you know, the only difference is, is, is your imagination and how big you want to make it. If you have a big vision then, you know, you got to think big. But the technology, you know, my first movie, I, as I said, I cut on, my first uh, feature film, I cut on film. We cut the Super 8 
that was already cut the Super 16 sure. film itself. Yeah, third, yeah. But when I, my second movie, Restaurant, uh, also starred, this starred Adrian Brody, and right. especially, well, that starred Adrian Brody as well. And uh, that was my first digital edit. We mm. shot our film, but we all got Dunked transferred to digital. To 35, all got mm. transferred to digital, and we cut on Avid. Wow. And Avid, wow. It was start. And so I was there for, I saw all this change happen. I was there for all of it. And now, you know, I think my first uh, digital, all digital production, the thing, first movie I shot on digital was probably, um, probably, uh, I think it was called Vacancy 2 for Sony. It was a horror movie or a thriller. A right. slide. Horror thriller movie sure, I made sure. for that. And then since then, you know, I haven't looked back. I've shot everything on, uh, on digital. I've, I've shot Red. I've shot Alexa. Right. Last thing I shot was a movie I just did for um, uh, for TV, a TV movie called Rome and Love for Hallmark. Shot all in Rome on Alexa. Beautiful. And oh, now sure. we're like, we have oh, beautiful overhead shots of Rome yeah. with a drone that we shot. We got her, you know, you know it's just incredible. Yeah, it's just, it is incredible. They, the technology is as revolutionized, and in a way, this is a good thing because it's very much democratizing uh, filmmaking. Because now, pretty much anyone—I mean, they've made entire movies on cameras. Cam yeah. Cameras, like this people made. Scott, a guy shot a movie like this called Orange yeah, or Tangerine, so. yeah, Tangerine uh, here in LA, and uh, about about. Um, uh, uh, transgendered, a transgendered woman, um, and that movie won Sundance, I think. Uh, wow! And so, you know, that was the first movie of its type. And even Steven Soderbergh shot an entire feature on on uh, on iPhones, and right. that's it. Well, so you know, um, a, a couple of things on what you said, absolutely. And I always tell people, I go, look, you know, uh, you can do a lot with these things. I uh, I think I sent you a film that I did in Brazil. I was there for forty six days, shot it on a five S. And it's called yeah. Signal and won a handful oh. of awards. And uh, I won Best Actor on Golden State Film Festival wow. out of 80 films. And it was shot on a 5S. Amazing. And it, the thing is this, is that, you know, um, back in the day I was working for Fox and CBS and I was doing stuff that... Um, that people weren't really doing at TV stations, which is like bringing parts of news. And, and I was crashing uh, my IBM at the time because the rendering was just too much for it. Sure. But, you know, but the bottom line is, is that like, like you said, at the convenience of and being able to take and make something uh, with this type of thing is really amazing. And yeah. having the quality that we can, I have a black magic 4k that I rarely use. I mean, I'd love to, but you know, run and gun and do what I need to do. And, you know, let's talk about this part uh, for actors. Do you think it's essential that they do know the tools of the trade, whether it's shooting Absolutely. or editing? Absolutely. I think as an actor, you have to be a one man band these days. I think as anybody in this industry, you have to be a one man band. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to learn more about digital editing now because like, you know, I mean, I, I could do it to some mm -hmm. degree, but I really want to be, become more proficient at it because there's always things you want to cut yourself and do. And like, um, and I just got so used to editors. I've always worked with editors, you know, except on my own student films. Obviously I cut all those myself. Sure. But I've never really cut much on ever since the digital revolution began and people started cutting on Avid. Um, I've always had editors hired to cut my stuff for me. I learned a little bit. I can do pretty easy stuff on, on my computer, but I really want to learn more about how to edit myself because I think that on some things, you it, it, smaller things, it's better to do it yourself. I like working with professional editors because I think that they bring a fresh perspective in and I, I, I really believe that's healthy for a, for a film. That being said, though, I mean, you know, my God, I mean, look at where things have gone. I mean, every, you know, anything is, anything is possible. Now. Right. Well, you know, one, one little note on that. And I, again, I tell actors, this all, actors, this all the time is, is that I said, look, if you can shoot your own headshot now, obviously if you have money, you should do it right. But if you can do a portrait mode to give someone something, if you can edit, you can shoot, you can do your own voiceover, you can do whatever, you know what you just did? You saved yourself an enormous amount of money and you save yourself an enormous amount of time because it takes time to get someone to go do your self tape for you. And uh, you know, it, yeah, it's a well, lot of work and time and money. Yeah. Also, you know, you want to know how to 
um, you want to be able to shape your own destiny, so to speak, then Agreed. learning the technology, learning how to do these things is essential. Yeah. And I think that, you know, also people audition that but they, the actors put themselves on tape. You know, that's the old term. Self put yourself on tape yeah, now. Exactly. You're, right. You put yourself tape and you send it in. You should be able to do that yourself. Yeah. That's something that, you know, you can do with this now. Yeah. And it looks perfectly good and perfectly acceptable. I've, I've hired actors on off yeah. of off of self tape. Um, so uh, uh, I, I think I did it on this movie on Affairs right. of State. Um, so I think that is a, that is something that is absolutely essential. Learning how to do these things yourself, building your own website, for example, is another another thing. You know, I mean, I think yeah. that's good for actors to uh, to do that because there are companies that you can pay to do these things, but there's no point in it anyway. I, I I hired a guy to to build my my website just because I wanted someone really, really good uh, to build my website. And I just didn't have the time at the time. Yeah. So I let someone build that for me. But I, it's still, if I had a little more time, uh, have, being a dad, being having a six-year-old son, obviously, as you know, becomes a little more complicated. Yeah, it does. Um, uh, you know, but, but you know, there's all these squares, uh, Squarespace. And yeah, and, 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 uh, and wiki. Or, or, anyway, yeah. you can upload your own videos. Yeah. And that, so having these sets that skill set as an actor, learn, I say take a writing course. Mm -hmm. I say take a directing course. Um, you can, there's plenty of places you can go. I teach a class over at the New York Film Academy, and they do a four week and an eight week class. And it's like, so you get in there, yeah. they teach you. I, I teach uh, directing for producers, but you learn how to direct a movie. Sure. You know, I mean, at least the essentials of how to do it and what goes into it. And you really come out of it with a knowledge of how to, you know, make a movie and you can go off and pretty much do it on your own. Right. And you should be able to if you're paying attention. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's, they have an editing class and it's all part of this four week, eight week program. I recommend the eight week. That's I think awesome, it's yeah. a little fast, but, um, but, um, and, and you can walk out of there and you can pretty much do anything, anything. And then it's just about to get some people together, shoot your film and shoot it over a period of time. Whatever. doesn't even, uh, get your movie made and, 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 and get yourself out there, find a way to, to, um, to feature yourself because right. auditioning is great. Um, that's wonderful. Uh, or find a script, find a writer, collaborate, get your friends together. You know, that's, that's how you do it. I think now. Absolutely. I um, agree with you. And I will say that, you know, uh, one other thing that comes with getting the knowledge of perhaps writing, directing, lighting, sound, whatever, is that when you do walk on set, I know as a director, you will probably agree with this, that an actor that has that type of skill set behind them is probably a lot more fun to work with than someone that comes on and goes, I don't know, I'll be in my trailer. This is not, this is, yeah, I, I like actors who like to be on the set, who like to be a, a involved in the process and who understand. When you get an actor, I just worked with Italia Ricci. She was on um, that Kiefer Sutherland show. 24? No, the other oh, one. The, oh, Ameri uh, the politics one. Yeah, uh, it's yeah, called I know you yeah, something, I something, um, yeah, oh, sorry, uh, something of state or, no, no, that's, no, that's it, it's, it's, um, God, I know what you're talking uh, about. Uh, anyway. Yeah, um, it's to keep this, keep it somewhere where he's the last person the entire last comic man. Yeah. Up, yeah, and he's the last guy, and he becomes the de facto right. president. Um, anyway, uh, uh, she's on that show, and you know, uh, she's been she's done a bunch of television and a bunch of stuff. And when you get an actor in there who knows their shit, yeah. excuse me, no, it's my, all right, it's okay, and and really knows technically what they're doing. You just watch them go and they're creating business for themselves. They know how to fill the time, how to, you just, you may, you can suggest a little bit, but I, it was, it's like, it, it's so easy and wonderful because they know where the camera needs to be for them. They know where they need to be. They know how to fill the time, how to create out. And it just, it just takes it to a whole other level. Totally agree. And I mean, that's and what I, that needs to, um, to do, you know, and getting that experience when you shoot a movie, when you, get on the other side of the camera at least once in your life, you get an understanding that, that, that will inform your career as an actor uh, in a way that will, um, it's not about impressing people, but it's about people going, wow, I want to work with this person. Sure. Right. They know what the hell they're doing and they come to the set prepared. Right. They and, know, and, they know and, how, can, how, how, but it's, it's really hard when you get someone to say, wait, where am I? What's this? What's going on? Yeah. Yeah. 
Because the worst thing that, that what kills you is time. Well, it does, oh. and and wa and wasting of time obviously we know is wasting of money. But reality is is that if you're saying if you're directing something and you say to an actor, you know you're giving me profile the whole time, right? I mean, I know we're going to pick up this shot, but I need you to kind of they don't you, the the essentials of shooting and knowing that when you look at something, you can go, oh yeah, I get it. it with an actor is golden because your team. Yeah is amazing. But one other thing I'll end this with is, is that I believe that most actors don't know what the word business means. They go, Oh, it's called show business for a reason. They go, Oh, someone's going to call me up and I'm going to be working. Well, in 2019, I wish that was true, but a lot of it is based upon your finding opportunities, making sure that you are dialed in and you have got your elevator pitch. And then when you get there, they go, there's no, there's no brainer. Let's go with this person. So, um, I, I, mean, I, I wish I could say it was even that easy. It really isn't. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a very, you know, I, I think this is, I, I, my, my bits of advice that I tell actors is this, it's a numbers game. Just get in audition, hone your craft, keep taking classes, do the stuff on the side, make short films if you can, get involved in as many things as you can, get as much experience as you can until you land that job. I got a buddy of mine who's doing the same thing right now. He is just getting started. He was a lawyer. He yeah, actually is a really talented actor, but he's laser focused. Yeah. And, you know, uh, and, and, you know, when I was out of college, I was, you know, until I got my first movie made and was able to continue making movies, I was... I was cater waitering. I was cleaning gutters. I was substitute teaching. I mean, I was doing every. I was doing yeah. singing telegrams, man. I would do. Oh, anything. I did that. That's funny. Yeah, I would do anything <laughs> to make money to support myself, you know. And that's so you do that on the side, and you you do the numbers game. It's auditioning, auditioning, auditioning as much as you can, and and do those projects on the side. Learn as much. It's all about you know. You're right. The one thing is not don't sit around waiting for things to come to you. I don't even do that. No, no because I'm a director. I produce my own. I, I, I mean, I get the, I, I get hired now and then just like I did on this last movie. I just did for, for, for TV, the TV movie I did, but, but you know, affairs of state was me. I produced that right. with my buddy, Steven Israel, awesome. you know, awesome. and my, it's my writing partner, same writer, same writer, wow. uh, wrote 10 Benny with me, Tom Pudworth and my same DP, my same cinematographer. And I'm pushing to do, I do commercials now on the side. I, I, I just, and I badger people, keep you know, I, I, I try to like gently prod people all the time to keep them informed of who I am. You know, be the squeaky wheel. You have to be the squeaky wheel. Yeah, I kind of yeah. size that up. By sitting at home and waiting for that phone to ring, forget it, baby. Yeah. That's never going to do it. You got to be gonna do it. in the mix and you got to be making it Abs happen. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say to you folks, you know, I say this all the time on every one of my shows is that I'm going to give you some social media here. If you want to get, uh, if you want to get a hold of Eric Bross or let's just say watch his timeline, maybe say, make some comments, but I will make this crystal clear to you that begging to people, direct messaging, or saying, oh my God, I would love to be in your whatever, really is the last thing you should ever possibly do. If you want to engage with people, that's proper networking and do what you need to do. Just make sure that people know you're around. But the best thing you could possibly do is make sure your product is dialed in, it's professional, and that you're engaging in a professional way. I can tell you right now, the only thing that direct messaging does is it blocks you. Those people will go, look, I don't have time. Because I personally get hundreds. I've got, what, 45,000 on my Instagram. Instagram. I get so many people that say, hey, Will, we saw the Netflix film you did. Can you put us on Netflix? Really? Really? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I'd say to you, here's some uh, Instagram information. It's I-N-C-R-E-D-I-B-L-E, -E, Eric21. That's incredible. Eric21 on Instagram. And on... Uh, yeah, see. incredible Eric. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Incredible Eric. 21. By the way, I did not give myself that name. That was kind of my, she said, I'm going to give you a name. And she wrote Incredible Eric That's 21. That's awesome. Like, okay. She did it for me. Like, well, right. just be lucky and it wasn't, uh, be lucky it wasn't Stud Eric 21. That's all I got to say. Just be uh, lucky. I don't know. Either, either yeah. way. Uh, yeah, if I, if I deal with that, I deal with it. What are you going to uh, do? But, but yeah, I think, I think you're right about direct messaging. I, I don't mind getting an email because I, my email is up there on, yeah. on, on my website and you can contact me. Um, People send me scripts sometimes and um, uh, actors. I will always look at an actor's reel, though. If an actor wants to send me their reel, I'll take a look at it always. I, I rarely don't unless I, I for some reason forget to. Unless but it's 40 minutes long. Look at this. Yeah. It's amazing. It's 45 minutes long.
No. Yeah, that's always fun. Yeah. Uh, Eric Bross, uh, of course, on Twitter, it's just his name. Bless you, sir. Thank uh, you. I've always wanted to do that on the air is say bless you to someone. So there it is. Uh, you have a, 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 an incredible uh, line of work that you have done. If you check out his website, which is ericbross.com, check it out. Uh, Affairs of State, check that film out. And any of the rest, Ten Benny, uh, go ahead, look at all his work. You think you'll enjoy it a lot. Um, and you gave us, I usually ask at the end, the best four letter word in the English language language is free your free advice but you gave us great advice to actors and people who are in this industry i, I have one yes. more advice that i Please. give to actors all actors if i can i can give this yes okay. and i i, I taught I, i've oh, actually please. you know coached actors on occasion I've, I've, I've come in and guest taught in classes and the thing i say to every actor is this don't audition for the role audition for your career good, good point and, and, and by that, I mean, just don't try to adjust to every single role and be that, just be you, do your thing, right. make it yours and audition for your career. You're obviously going up for a part, but if you're not right for it, it's cool. Yeah. You know, I have a good friend of mine uh, 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 who I saw in his first play. Uh, which is one of his first plays called Rosetta Street. His name is Sam Rockwell. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't take my eye off this guy. I didn't know him at the time. He's working with a buddy of mine in this play. And I, I said, I got to know who that guy is because you couldn't take your eye off him. He came in. I was like, holy shit, look at that. I mean, and I met him and then he, he was in my film. He was supposed to star originally in 10 Benny, but then he fell out and Adrian came in. Uh, that's another interesting story. But what ended up happening is that I, I just watched watching him in his career has been an interesting, uh, a very interesting experience because I, I see how Sam never, just always did his own thing. He didn't give a shit. Yeah. He did his own thing. He did what he did best. Same thing with De Niro. If you watch some of his, like he just did himself. He, he did his thing. He didn't try, I think because every time you try to please everybody, as the old saying yeah. goes, you end up pleasing nobody. So just audition for the for your career not for the role but for your career i i totally agree with you and i have many people that say look i do check me out i do a great De Niro or i do a great uh tom cruise and i'm like why if they want those people they'll ask for those people be you and really just be as natural as you can and stop acting awesome there you go Eric Bross, really appreciate you coming on the show. Acting Up Radio, you got all the information. I will be doing a follow-up article you can check out on Acting Up Radio, brought to you by allcasting.com. And uh, great. I really appreciate it, sir. And we'll see you on the red carpet, my friend. You got it. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. All right. Hey, folks, that's it. You know all of our Instagram, all of our Twitter, all that stuff. Go check it out. And we'll see you next week. Once upon a time in the night. Senator, this is Michael Lawson. He's going to be working for us. Well, welcome aboard, Michael. Thank you, sir. What do you do? A little nothing on camera. Is going public with it. What do you want? I'm willing to pay. You have to promise to never hurt my father. My father? Not sure, but I could learn a lot from the man. You have to find your place, and you might as well be sitting with the big boys. That's more money than you've seen in your whole life. The only thing more dangerous in this little box is the real DC. And it's going to stay in that box. Than hiding the truth. I've got something I'm selling to the highest bidder. Affairs of State. Be careful. These aren't Boy Scouts you're dealing with. You have a future if you want it, but are you willing to make the necessary sacrifices? See, I was hoping you could tell me. Everything always gets cleaned up around here, don't you know? In this city... I just wish more people knew how easy it was to get this video. You're dealing with it. And Adrian Grenier. We play this right, and we all win. We need to leave. No, no, you need to leave that drive. Where is... I don't think I can do this anymore. You'll do this until I say stop. I want to know more about your friend. A flash drive. That the only one, Michael? Get rid of her. David. Not too distant future.
America was at war with itself. And where there is war, there are casualties. Corn Sweat. Thora Birch. David James Elliott. With Mimi Rogers.